her face, you can almost see like a singular tear run down her face. Um, before like when she grabs her face and like brings her hand away, you can notice that she used her fingers to wipe the tear away. She then has like a, an aggressive looking smile and she just says, <laughs> We're done talking. I don't see it that way. What would you like to say? Even from around uh, you seem forced in your actions. Uh with the uh it was insight, wasn't it? It wasn't uh perception that you got. No, I rolled inside. Yeah, okay. Um with the insight that you got, you can definitely tell that there's something forcing her, but it, as she said, it has nothing to do with her captain, so something else is, is making her do this, or at least m making her feel like she has to do this. So when you say that, you kind of realize that the thing that you say is not necessarily a, a stupid question, but it is a question to which you almost kind of know the answer to, you just need confirmation at this point. Uh, with that, roll me a... Diplomacy with advantage. I try. I try. I try. Uh, <laughs> 12, I'll, 12. I'll roll. <laughs> I'll roll nerve with twelve. Uh, with disadvantage. However, because she's got plus four to nerve, this could be very difficult. Yay! Ten. There we go. Ten. Uh, she then looks at you and just goes. I am currently held captive by a deal. If I do not do anything about it, my life is completely forfeit to them. Well, uh, what kind of deal is that? As this is happening, we come back to Felix, who has now placed Fletcher down and is looking over him temporarily. During this during this moment, Fletcher, uh, sorry, Felix is looking over Fletcher and basically taking care of him. The bleeding has seemed to stopped, uh, has seemed to have stopped, and he just basically sits back for a second, um, sort of trying to calm his nerves and cool himself down. In the in the moments of which that he sort of then turns around to you to Lily, um, Fletcher, I would like you to roll me a survival. Mm-hmm. Survival. Thirteen. Um, you awaken, and as you sort of awaken, you suddenly get up, and you realize that you're in a forest, a cold, dark forest in the middle of nowhere. Um, you don't recognize the, the, the trees around you, and you especially don't recognize... Um, any of the area around you. There is no one surrounding you whatsoever. Uh, where, where am I? Well, I'd almost say that you're actually in a bit of a tricky situation, really. You hear a voice, but you do not see the figure of which that is stating these claims. Oh, oh God, my heart ain't. Who, who's there? It's more of a perspective, really. <laughs> you could say your eye, or you could say your newly vacant socket. Mm. Ah, I failed to stop him. I wouldn't uh, be so harsh on yourself, mate. After all, there's not too much that you can really do against a completely crazed, willpower-heavy samurai. Am I right? <laughs> You're talking a lot of sense there. Indeed I am. And as a matter of fact, right now, I think I'm the only type of chance you've got making any kind of sense ever again. You then see a man in sort of a large trench coat, black as the night itself, walk in front of you. 
short, uh, short black hair, and you see sort of a, a strange sort of runic symbol on his right cheek. His hands are in his pockets, and he is his shoes are quite beautifully dressed. They're actually like black dress shoes that have almost been untouched by the natures of the world. Like as if they've been just fresh out of the factory themselves. <laughs> oh. You're quite fancy dress for a hike in the woods. Oh, and you're quite badly I... banged up for someone who's come to a land of supposed peace. <laughs> That's the trouble, isn't it? Feels like a curse. No matter where I go, everyone around me is either hurt or I am. It's funny you say that, actually. Because, uh... You're about to die very soon. Sorry, mate, there's nothing I can really do about that. After all, you are currently bleeding from your head. Uh, you know... I can't say I'm surprised. All in the fact that it took this long. <laughs> However... I think that, personally, it's a bit of a shame, really. Someone of your calibre, someone of your expertise, and also someone of your incredible capability. I mean, I'm not really much of a fan of the tournament too much, other than it's incredible and impeccable under understanding of the human mind, or at least the concept of a warrior. I saw you, and I realised something very important. Even though that you got hit, and you're dying very slowly in a painful way. You still very much are holding on to that brand on your arm. <laughs> well, you could say it's a unique kind of stubbornness. A constant dream to just surpass one's goals. And then... see it all to the end. He then says, uh, he's sort of like, keeping his hand in his pockets, he then opens up his jacket a bit, and he's sort of like, a, got a quite nice suit on. And that's exactly what I want to do for you, my friend. I want to give you a reason to keep on going. Or at the very least, I want to be able to be the reason why you keep on going. Oh. What makes you say that? Think of me as a sponsor of sorts. You see, you're dying, and you probably don't want to end up dying before you get the taste of true victory. But also, I kind of enjoy your... Let's say, entertainment. Personally, I would prefer if you didn't kick the bucket just yet. So how about I help you, you help me? Savvy? <laughs> I guess you could call it an eye for an eye, but uh, I can't eat the other one. But I like where you're going with this. I will help you as much as I can. And by that I mean I'll heal up your wound and make sure you don't go off to La La Land too damn soon. After all, the demons will have to wait for you. <laughs> However, yeah, I've still got a few to go through to the wild life. I will need something in return for you. Sure. What is it? Well, don't you really worry about exactly what it is. But all I will say is, if I don't come collecting in the next five years, just expect someone to turn up at your door and ask a few things. However... If by the slim chance that you end up dying before then, consider your debt still repaid to me. In kind, if you will. I mean, if I'm going to kick the bucket anyway, I still want to see her face one more time. <laughs> you got yourself a deal. Fantastic. He then walks up to you and he removes his right hand from his pocket. It reveals multiple runes on each finger and even a rune on the back of his hand as he goes to place his hand in front of yours to shake yours. 
Fletcher does the same. Fair enough. Placing it in his. As you do so, you feel a strange glowing coming from the back of his... uh, You see a strange glowing coming from the back of his hand and suddenly um, you feel the pain in your head go away as you feel no longer any pain. Um, As you awaken properly, um, you now awaken. However, as you do so, you look at your hand as it's starting to sear with a strange burning sensation as now a symbol that was glowing on the back of his hand is now in the palm of yours. I guess it wasn't a dream. Fle- uh, Felix oh, then wow. comes up to you and goes, Fletcher, I uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, you were you were gone for about three, five minutes. I don't know where you were. <sighs> Did you... Pass through the floor or something by accident whilst you were asleep? Ah, uh, you could say that. Definitely felt some old, like some sort of different reality. But I'm back. Where are the others? They're still fighting Rose, I think. Well, I feel like going for a few more rounds. Why don't I jump into the fray? Uh, I'm just going to have a real quick look at your health. Uh, your maximum health is... 191. Uh, hang on a second. You are back up. Um... With 47 health left to your name. <laughs> your right eye is still covered up with all of the bandages. Um, but yes, that's. You've still got all of your equipment, and that's that's pretty much it. Do you join the fray? Uh, let's see. Do I? with post haste as I speed off, <laughs> slightly phasing through the ground. As you do so, you eventually catch back up to the behind um, <clears throat> behind um, Cloak, as you suddenly feel a strange sensation of your powers flicker for a second as it launches you back up. However, you still feel your powers are still active and you can still use them. It was almost like as if you lost your powers for a brief, like, less than a millisecond. It was a really weird sensation. Like a glitch in your own abilities. Either way, you are now behind Cloak. And you now are in the conversation with the others. Look, I need that sword. If you're not going to give it to me, then I have no other choice but to fight you. You have no idea. I need it. There's like, always other decisions need... to be made. Sorry, what were you going to say, Clay? You need that sword? That, that doesn't do anything special, does it? The key of the Anamon is one of the most powerful artifacts, and he wants it for me to give to him. It's the only bargain that's worth my life. You wish to grasp this great power and give it away. I don't care about it. I've already got plenty of enough power. But he... he... Why do you need to give it away to him? Roll me a... either... I'm gonna say either a diplomacy or a persuasion. It's your choice. A good diplomacy. Okay. Wow, that's uh, that's effective. <laughs> she then like, she then just looks at you and just goes, "Enough talk!" And she immediately attempts to attack you. As uh, about three extra minutes on this topic have passed from your um, time limit, by the way, Bill. So that's an extra three minutes. 
Is she attacking? Uh, well, due to the uh, due to the rule of direction, since you are directly behind Cloak uh, Fletcher, you can also react against her. Hmm. Hmm, since my abilities don't work on Cloak... Konta. I very foolishly forgot that this ability gives me an, act an extra action every turn, which can be an attack. Uh... Fool. Well, either way, this is a reaction at this point, so what are you reacting? Yeah. You reacting? How are either of you reacting? <sighs> are either of you reacting? Are you just going to take there and hit it, and take a hit? No, obviously not. <laughs> I will counter. Okay. Do the counter. Um, I might just react to her, but they uh, kunai chain kunai. Okay, and hope that Fletcher has it if I fail. Fair Go enough. Fletcher! Oh no, I got it. <laughs> yeah, Fletcher hasn't got it, but you have roll damage. Nicey, nicey, very nicey. Although, to be fair, that's not that great. Because uh, I don't have willpower active, so... That's just... I thought you did because of the strenuous form. No, the willpower is separate. The uh, strenuous form is separate. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's just... I'm pretty sure I know this. Yeah, okay. Okay. I... Any day now. <laughs> Alright, chill. <laughs> Blimey, okay. That is, that is a, that is one hell of a difference. From going from like, 90s all the way to like, 12. <laughs> Just 12 damage. And like, consistency is not a uh, cloak's thing, is it? It's still, it's still over five above, so it stops it, so I'm chill. Okay. So, okay, so either way you hit her, uh, you stop her. Oh, wait, hang on, the, uh, hang on, the strange form still act, right? Uh, yes, because here's the thing, uh, that was her action, it is now Rakia's, because obviously we just had your action, then it was her action, now it's Rakia's action. Uh, uh, Rakia, okay, that's, what would you like to do? It's at least another 2d4, so it's add six. Oh, okay. oh boy. So it's 18. Okay. <laughs> Wahoo. Well, Rocky is feeling a bit conflicted here because it's like, well, we don't really want to kill her, but. You can still try and like ask her questions. You can still try and roll charisma and stuff. Come back, or you can just beat the crap out of her. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Rocky ain't really much for talking, that's the thing. I mean, <laughs> Fletcher's back up. That's a that's a thing to be happy about, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Very happy, and it's like you know, you know what, you know, Rock Rakia is gonna be like you know, you know, is gonna be all concerned with Fletcher. You know what? Because that Fletcher is alive, I now feel that there's a level of peace in my heart. Why can't you feel peace in your heart, Rose? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what would you like to do? Uh, I guess you know I'm just with uh, with Fletcher. I just sort of go, you know, go, go point, you know, go over here. I want to yeah. point you're on the other side. So if you try and move past her, she is actually yeah, to get her, her action. Of... Not a good, not a good idea. Not no. a good idea. Hmm. I mean, it really super is screwy. Um, I'm gonna try. You know what? I'm going to. This is probably a bad idea, but I'm going to activate. A whip ability, so I could, you know, it's uh, stinging blood rain. Okay, what's about, the radius of that? Um, it's about like five meters, basically. Okay, you won't hit any one of your team, but you'll hit only her, you know, as long as the yeah. others don't get any closer. Okay, roll it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm guessing, yeah, just oh, come on, straightforward decks, I guess, you know. Oh. Uh, I miss my advantage rolls. <laughs> <laughs> they will return one day. 
in like a... Oh, never mind. Minute. Minute. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, never yeah. mind then. Yeah, you're fine. See, so you activate it. She's now not, uh, she's now not allowed to, uh... Uh, react to your next action uh, because the, obviously this is an activation of a thing. It happens. It just so happens to do damage upon activation. It's not an attack, is it? It's a strenuous form. Yeah. Okay. It's a strenuous form. Yeah. Roll and for, the strenuous form. Roll yeah, for the yeah, time yeah. limit. Yeah. Sorry, just real quick. Oh yeah, roll for the time limit. Yeah, it's one d four returns. So roll the yeah, damage. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that I have to roll against... Wow, okay, it's just this once, but you could, in fact, uh, you have it will get on a bleeding ailment, and uh, if you don't roll, you know, um, 15 plus constitution, endurance, or fortitude, you get stunned for 1d4 of turns. Okay, so uh, that's for the bleed, and... Ooh. That's for the uh, stun. So she's stunned for one d four turns. Did you say? Yep. Yeah, one d four turns. You yeah. roll the you roll the d four of stun, and I now have to have a look at this. Um, I'd say that that's uh, I'd say that that's a severe thing. So that's a d twelve of bleed, and that is just indefinite d twelve of bleed. So she's now got an injury that is basically a horrible gash that cannot be. Uh, it basically it won't stop bleeding. Uh, the only way to stop it bleeding Damn. is if she um, is if she legitimately is able to heal herself. Like, so you know, unlike other injuries that can eventually go away, this one will not, and she'll keep taking a d12. Uh, I'm using um, uh, I'm using new raz razor whip, so that's okay. uh. And this is also yeah. do doing doing, uh, or, or are you now just hitting her with an attack now? Uh, yeah, well, I've, that's the damage I have to do, isn't it? Or is it just that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah no, I mean, just honestly, those, she's just done it? now. It's, it's just uh, injuries, yeah. isn't it? It's not damage and injuries, Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's not damage and injuries. It's just those injuries. Okay. Uh, you you know? can now roll for a, an, uh, an attack. Um, so, obviously, since it's since you're using whips, you have no other choice but to use whips in your attacks. But you're still allowed to that's roll for an enough. attack. That is, that, is, that is fine, actually. I'm what going to like go to do with just my... For it? What would you like to do? <laughs> I mean, you know, say so she's. I just sort of yell out, you know, she's, you know, she's stuck. She's stunned. Grab her. Okay, uh, everyone, you are now allowed to roll for an attack since she is stunned. You are now allowed to. Can roll I, for attacks. with my attack, can I aim for a sword with my bow and knock it out of her hat? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Cool. And then I would have to. I don't know if you know this track here, but oh, grabbing yeah. is not our specialty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're supposed to roll d, you know, one d four of how long this stun lasts. Yep. <laughs> how far does the sword go? Uh, about ten meters bar behind her. Okay. Whatever you do, don't let her get that back. Can I react to this by going and grabbing the sword? Uh, you can use up your turn to go and grab the sword. I go and grab the sword. Okay, you've used up your turn. Uh, she so... can no longer grab the sword because it's also intangible. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> well, we'll get to you in a second, Fletcher. Don't you worry your uh... pretty little head, because there is something that you need to know. Uh, okay, it's always a caveat, Bill. Isn't there? Uh, what are you doing? Are you doing an attack against her, or...? Are you going to try and I guess roll I your charisma? Just roll my... uh, I could just roll my knockout strike right with my finesse, I guess. Um, yeah. okay. Okay, you, mean... you forgot to roll a d4, by the way, for how long the stun, stun lasts, by the way. Joe. Oh, I thought you were supposed to roll that since it was... Oh, can I roll? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry my bad. All right. Four! You get four Damn. turns, baby. Nice. Got four chances at this. So yeah, basically you get to roll four loads of things that you want to do, and then again I'll get to you in a second. Uh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> slick. Okay, Megalovania. <laughs> so you're um, uh, uh, you're just you're just knocking her out then, yeah? My advanced finesse strike, yes, which also does damage. Uh roll damage. <clears throat> and um, uh, yeah, 
Nothing special, but it's still damage. Okay. Uh, yep. Not my so normal she's damage. Now sure, but... she is now knocked unconscious, and she has also taken an extra bit of damage. Yep. Ooh, I took. Uh, you guys have three more turns of stuff to do, although that's from the stun. So she's now unconscious as well. She just a Bolivian ragdoll. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's what um, stinging blood ring does. <laughs> did I miss anything? <laughs> okay, so you grab onto the sword. So we're now coming to you. You grab onto the sword. Uh, roll me willpower. Okay. Oh, no. You feel the willpower uh, slip into the weapon and slip through you. Uh, ca uh, can you tell me what is your willpower number, please? It is 14. Uh, do you also have willpower path of the spirit? Yes, that do is you have at 6. Willpower extent. Willpower extent? Yes. Okay. Uh, what is your dex and strength? Uh, dex is 12 and strength is 14. Okay. This is not necessarily a weapon that you can, uh, n you can naturally use. However, uh, when you grab onto it, you can feel a certain essence of it crawling up you, almost like as if you can feel like parasitic things worming their way through your skin. When you suddenly feel a flush, like as if it's almost trying to, uh, like, access your willpower, when you do so, it's almost like as if you hit it with a pulse of your own uh, spirit and it suddenly subsides. The uh, the sword is no longer attempting to consume you. Yeah, oh, uh, this is why I don't use swords. Feels wrong. Uh, it's trying to control me or something. Rose is now unconscious. What would the rest of you like to do? I guess I walk up to the group now. Okay. So I'll also call my horse over. The horse uh, gently gallops over to you. Oh, horsey. Horse, a horse. Well, we still need to find out the information about why she requires the weapon, but that should be a lot easier now. I'm sorry. Um, so <laughs> why are you here? Oh, I didn't explain. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't, did I? Right, um, my name's Ryu. I... The Empress sent me as a, her confidence in you. Let's call it that. She wanted to make sure that this was done. You mean... She didn't think we could do it ourselves? No, she wanted reinsurance. This is exactly, well, it's kind of a declaration of war, so we kind of want to make sure it goes well. And if we can keep her on the low buy, it gives us a bit more time, you know? I think we would have been fine. I can definitely see that, but either way, I'm glad everything went alright. I assume you can <laughs> keep her nullified for longer periods of time. As long as she's near me, yes. Hmm. And the only question is, do we do the questioning here, or do we take her back secretly? You then suddenly hear a <gasps> and then you suddenly see a, a body suddenly just like rise up very quickly as a, na a currently shirtless man with two katanas either side of him, or at least two sheaths that are empty either side of him as he just gets up. <gasps> hmm. Looks like <laughs> I won Miyamoto. <laughs> <laughs> Slaps his own like forehead. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you alive, my friend. Mm -hmm. He looks over at you, very puzzled. You survived. Ah, <laughs> uh, it takes a lot more than that to put me down. That should have been Good more match, than enough. Though. But then again, I guess. Things worked out for the way that they did. Should I, uh, 
Be going then, or do you need me for something else? As he then goes to retrieve his swords. Mm. Mm. But why not join us for this climactic event? You want me to join you? What exactly for? Yeah, uh, it's uh, something to do with the pirates. Wouldn't you like to know be known for the glory of taking down you old Kyger? Hmm. He thinks for a second. The old Kyger. Strongest creature there is. He then smiles. <laughs> As much as I do want to actually take on the great beast myself, I have a feeling that you guys have already proven more than enough that I shouldn't even be considering it. After all, I was not only defeated by you, Fletcher, but I couldn't even fight her in my condition after the fight. Who's to say that I could even match up to your Kyger's strength? This man is a living legend, after all. I've got much more that I need to do. Clearly, I am not the strength level that I thought I was. I want to point out, uh, everyone uh, can see the band on his arm is green, uh, and it reads 526,500 points. It is oh. a green band. Mm. Oh. That is a lot of points. Mm. Mm, may I remind us, people, that we do not have much time here. Oh, actually, hang on a sec. No, it doesn't say that. I just realized I don't remove the points from someone just because yeah. they were yeah. defeated because he was only defeated by her. Completely forgot. Never mind. Yeah. Sorry. Ever so sorry. It's actually 700 and 2,000. As... Uh, Fletcher, you have yeah. uh, 1,501 rather than 3,001. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, Sid. Come on now. You can train with us. Hmm? And then you will be stronger. No, thank you. I'm not really you fond of training with others. I would prefer to understand how they fight in the heat of battle. Considering that I almost died, I actually would consider this a loss for myself, in more ways than hmm. one. I still have a long way to go, and I still would like to improve. And after all, she was only one of his demon generals. There's more to come. You were able to do well because of your abilities, Cloak. And after all, it did take about, what, three, four of you? I only landed a small scratch on her, and she immediately regenerated it thanks to the weapon that she held. <laughs> ah! Oh, you mean this thing? Speaking of which, yes. Perhaps I could take a closer look at that. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I'll let you have it for 3,000 points. Really? Well... <laughs> Can I try, like, roll no, no, uh, the no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm just like... Them in the face. Say, nope, 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 nope. Just, uh, <laughs> I was only going You're to ask you have, have a look, look at it. it. So, uh, don't, don't sell it! Don't sell it! That's a legendary weapon! Why would he sell it? As much of an offer as I would definitely like the weapon, I actually just wanted to see if it was actually the genuine article and not just some impressive copy. Oh no, that's a hundred percent the real deal. I read about I've read about it so many times. It's actually very interesting. Life Lifestealer could have actually been forged by a by a plant from Angela Linian. Oh, never mind. Well, that's. That's a load of other stuff. But anyway, it's really fascinating. You're talking but that's about the unmistakable. Legend. 
You're talking about the legend of Ta uh, Takigawa, aren't you? Oh. Well, hmm. actually... What's Lifestealer? Let hmm. me have a look at it. Please, I promise that I won't take it. I didn't earn it, after all. I was only messing with you. Here, go ahead. He grabs onto it, and you can actually see the same weird, horrible sort of marks that are going across his hand, and then suddenly you just see a pulse go through his body as then suddenly it becomes almost shivering and subservient to him. Hmm. He then takes the, uh, he then holds the blade and he then looks across it as again it begins to grab, and it's almost like the blade actually begins to like melt upwards to his fingers and stab into his hand as he looks at the handle. <laughs> I think it likes you. He then removes it after a small amount of blood comes out of his hand, and then it seeps into the blade. Yep, that's indeed true. The weapon was not only forged with a special type of steel and iron, but it was also entirely beautifully crafted with all sorts. The handle is actually entirely made out of a special type of Engenarlinian tree, known as the <gasps> Canyalabra. Ah! Just to get the book. Takigawa was incredibly potent when it came to his forging techniques. As much as I'd like to take this off of her, it is not my place. And as much as I'd like to take it off of you, that would not exactly be the fair nor honorable thing. So who exactly is going to lay claim to this treasure? Well, it's a sword, and I don't use swords. So I'm probably going to hand it over to Cloak. Actually, it's impressive that it didn't eat you alive. Only those with a decent- Oh, I- I felt it. It really, it really tried. I just, uh... I think I was just in the right mind space that it didn't. Well, all of Takigawa's works actually have requirements of willpower. If you don't have them, certain aspects of the abilities are lost to you. In this particular case, Lifestealer actually steals the vitality from a being who is not worthy of the weapon. You have to actually prove yourself in the first meeting of it. So you proved yourself when you first grabbed it. That's impressive. Ah. Huh. Hmm. Maybe reconsider the sword rule? You know, I just, like, you know, just... Rakia just giving, like, uh, the eyes of, like, to communicate, like, I have a sword too, we can have fun with swords. <laughs> Fletcher looks at it. And just considers the fact, giving it maybe a little bit too long of a thought, of a long thought, and it's like, yeah, maybe it's time to spec into other things. Either way, I'd be <laughs> careful if I were you. Oh, and by the way, as he then stabs it into the ground before taking his hand off of it, um... You might also notice that the blade still can harm you, yes? As he then points at the tattered bit of clothing that you have from the blade when it cut you. As he points oh, at yeah. Cloak. Oh. It's because all of Takigawa's, uh, well, prized weapons are actually infused with willpower. They were willforged, so there's no way that any power can truly resist its abilities. Even if you wanted to, these things can still harm those with intangibility and even nullify a physiology. I read about it in a book, but even more so, it's the exact reason why I wanted all six of them. But it's good to know that there, this one is in the right hands. Or at least, in the right hands for now. I don't suppose there's a legend if you collect all six, they fuse into some mega blade. He looks, at, weird. he looks at you again with like the wide eyes and sort of stare, but this time his eyebrows are actually doing that, doing the work in sort of showing confusion. <laughs> no, the blades are just incredible uh, artworks of legend. Uh, um, look, they're they're some of the greatest pieces of artwork in forging history. 
They're actually forged by a man claimed to be a forge saint. Uh, one of m only a few people ever actually anointed this title by the forge god himself. A man who claims to be the greatest of all forging. There are only so many people who can ever even be claimed a forge saint, and there's only ever one person who can be claimed as a forge god at a time. Because of this, Takigawa made six weapons, all to prove his greatness with not only his willpower, but the understanding of the art of attuning. If you were to ever find someone of any kind of legendary craft of this le this caliber, these weapons alone would make you legendary warriors. After all, Rose's capabilities mostly came from her sword, no? After all, I... <laughs> I've not got any powers, but even I'm no fool. You've currently got a field of nullification going on right now, don't you? Uh, yes, that's selective. Hmm. <laughs> and yet, she was still able to fight relatively well against four rather strong adversaries, equating or even increasing of the level of her own strength. She tried. Despite that, whenever she even slightly cut you, she immediately healed all of her wounds and injuries that you inflicted on her. Correct? Hmm. I don't know about that. The weapons make you a legendary warrior, but they don't make you a god, nor do they make you impervious to being defeated. After all, if that were truly possible, then a weapon such like that being out there would be in the hands of someone who would be claimed as such. A god. And nothing less. By the way, um, I have a question for you. You said that you wanted to find out information. The Empress wants to know exactly why she's here, correct? And why she's so interested? Are you referring to my own requests? I'm referring to exactly why is she unconscious? She can't exactly answer our questions. That's not my fault. Hey, I had to stop her from attacking! I mean, at least now we have a chance of tying her up and interrogating her. She just would not go down! So unreasonable. A bit much, perhaps, Racky. So it's just a shame she couldn't finish what she was doing and take the poison from this land. Is that what she was doing? Yes, uh, that was part like of her. That was part of her arrangement. Oh, the Empress, I... yes. The well, Empress why don't we that. stop her? Uh. Uh, someone got a little, uh, fight-happy and interrupted. And it's the a good thing I, I did. I was clearly right. If I had waited any um, longer, these guys would have come in Ray and taken away my fun. Although I do have to admit, I am at least grateful that you stopped me from being killed. So, thank you to all of you. I was overseeing her doing it. And just before you arrived, and then I was talking to... Wait. To who? Oh, wait. Kleethoff is here! <laughs> just before you arrived, Dias, I was watching over her, invisible. And my ability ran out. And then I heard a voice. And he merged from the tree you cut me down from. Oh, boy. I thought I sensed a strange presence leaving you. I just assumed that there was one of your teammates hiding in there. Oh, no, he's awful. He's a horrible puppety thing. And he kills people that are just perfectly innocent, that poor book lady. I'm not entirely oh. sure what that means, but all I do know is... I'll keep an eye out for the name Cleefoth. Nevertheless... Don't give him... Don't give him a chance. If he tries to talk to you, just 
to lay some down. He's not That's a person I should be concerned of too. Would they be a threat to the people here? Oh, definitely. I mean, they're a threat to everybody on the boat. Do you have a general description? Uh, it's made of Where wood. So a power user, huh? Oh yeah, biokinetic and uh, nature manipulation, I believe. Oh, of course. So we're looking for someone made of wood, and that's about it. Uh, Last time we encountered him, we we dealt a heavy blow to him that cut him in half. But he got up and put himself the back together like it was nothing. So the man is either immortal or he just has a way to stave off death from bifurcation? Separation? He's definitely not immortal, as much as they love to think that sort of thing. Hmm. So you agree there is nothing that is unkillable? Definitely. Even those who proclaim themselves as unkillable are definitely killable. You just have to find the right way. <laughs> Glad to see a like-minded individual. By the way, we should probably get her back. After all, I don't... Which I had to ask some words, actually. So you, I believe you go by Talos, is it? Yes. Well, whichever way you'd be preferred to be statement. Do you have any way of contacting your clan? It would be a lot easier transport-wise, and I prefer a lot secret her than just walking into city with her. Otherwise, there well, there are still other members of her group around near the city. Well, why don't I you just not get... any of them I have a few contacts in the area. Why don't you just get the phaser? After all, he can just make her intangible, therefore she can't fight or hurt anyone. Where's he gonna put her? Easy. Can't you just put her in the Grand Prison? After all, that place is completely impregnable, and even if she was able to have her powers back, she wouldn't be able to fight back against the legendary pillar. He then smirks and looks over at um, uh, Ryu. Well, I would prefer a larger group either way, and a lot more of a subtle one, but the intangibility user still works as backup, although I'd prefer you to be nullifying her the whole time, to be fair, until she gets there. That would be a safe place, although it is quite a distance away. Hmm. If you have anyone who's subtle, I recommend calling your group and travelling with them. Though those who are least subtle, if you wish, I can guide them to our destination, so we do not... Well, show an obvious track of taking on the Yokaiga's know, most important people. Perhaps then I may make a suggestion. The two people that I know of this particular place that is actually rather subtle would obviously be the Nullifier and the Phaser. After all, he was able to go completely undetected and follow her at every single matching of the whim. Second, as you said, you wanted her to be completely nullified. Well, this could be done, and if in case of a certain emergency, the Phaser could then just make her intangible and run away with her, correct? Pretty much. As long as she can't break from my grasp. That's how long can you... How fast can you travel? Quite far, though. I do have certain abilities that allow me to go farther. And faster. But, uh, they're... I've already used them trying to keep up with her. Joe, would I know... Roughly, sort of, the... Not, like, specific distances, but, like, days travel, maybe, how long it would take to get from roughly here to the prison? Uh, since the since the Grand Prison is actually inside of the capital, it would probably take, um, depending on the speed, it would probably take anywhere between about a half an hour all the way up to an hour, depending on the speed. If it was on horseback, it'd be an hour to half hour. How many people can I get on my horse, roughly? Uh, two. You and your uh, compatriot. Right, so I couldn't, like... Hogs hire, put her on the back, and then have another person on as well. Probably not without okay. at least halving your horse's move speed, which would then double right. The okay, yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, 
Well, I think we'll have to take this the slow way. You and your compatriots take her back to the capital. I can, if you wish, have things pre... I can get the ahead of you guys and have things pre-sorted out for your arrival. So we can get her in as subtly as possible. Sounds good. I need to rest. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm rushing over to uh, uh, to Fletcher to like, you know, support so, to so, to support him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that fight took a lot. I and I'd already been you using did. my powers on overdrive. You did real good. In that very, case, we very proud teacher. Whilst you guys are talking, uh, <clears throat> you then just uh, cloak. You then just have Dias walk up to you. In that case, you should probably lower your nullification barrier. After all, your friends are going to be practically useless without it. I have a feeling they'll be just fine. Well, you're not going to be able to make anyone intangible without that. Uh, no, I can still do it. Wait, what? It's no problem, Dias. Isn't it now? I've never heard of people who are immune to nullification before. Then best you try not to peer into it. He looks over at them for a brief second. He then turns around. Well, that looks you son of a bitch! So that's what you've done. Are you entertained? <laughs> <laughs> Do they know? They know enough. <laughs> Oh, the things you do. I'd be impressed if it weren't for the fact that I'm actually quite excited. You see, it's actually quite scary to see someone of that level and caliber with that much control of their own will. That they can do, well, that. You impress me, Talos. I'm afraid you won't see anything too much more impressive from me. On the contrary, I'm sure that I'll see plenty. So, with that being said, um, question. Uh, how exactly do you go about shipping and transporting here? Hmm. So obviously you've, you said that it is best for you guys to get there as soon as possible. We already know that she can't be put on the horse if we also want her to be nullified, unless if uh, unless if Bill is the one who's riding the horse with her on it, which probably is not going to be the the thing that happens. Let's be realistic. Just tie her to his back, and off he goes on the horse. My just, horse. just, just done in a horse. Yeah, we could just sort of like you know just be. Get, just hug her on the horse. I mean, I guess <laughs> if I gave the horse instructions and you got on, we could theoretically do that. And how would you get back? <laughs> I would have to walk with you guys. Yeah, considering again, it's only a two-person. Well, well I mm, technically I wouldn't have to, but sure, let's say I would have to walk with you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. So is that the plan, or is or, or are you just going to carry her, keep her nullified? I can either okay. I can either go ahead of you guys, go and get everything prepared. So when you do eventually get there, it will be a smoother transition. Or Bill, you can go ahead of time, and we'll catch up. Or Cloak can go ahead of time, we'll catch up with you. Yeah, because realistically, if you want to keep her nullified, the only person that could actually lift her passively 
with any amount of ease is actually Felix. Uh, and I want to point out, with any amount of ease, without his powers. Um, everyone else is going to struggle to lift her because nobody has above 10 strength. Good strength. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna happen unless, unless I do. I oh, actually no, I don't think I can, can I? So, so the reason no, I can't. No. You would be fine with uh, Fletcher is because Fletcher actually has intangibility, and thanks to Reality's gift, he can bring someone with him, and it's regardless of their weight. Yeah. Um, I also do have a uh, fourteen in strength. Oh, uh, okay. We'd still have to roll for contesting rolls each time over a certain amount of time before. Then also having to roll endurance rolls. Which, I mean, it's not way, worth the risk. Yeah. By the way, I'm also going to re yeah. remind you they would be with disadvantage because not only has it been like almost like 18 hours that you guys have been awake, because I want to point out it's like two in the morning. I also want to point out something else that's very important. You have been knocked out and nearly dead, like at least. Well, you know. Here's here's my question. Now, I would not know the answer yeah. to. However, I will ask this. Yeah. Bloke said that he did have contacts. If he was to use those to help us, how much would the time decrease? Uh, well, the problem is he needs to go and contact them, and the issue is that he doesn't have any way of signal. Yeah, he does. <laughs> okay, he does have a way of signal. Wow. I just realized. Yeah. <laughs> he does actually have a way of signaling them. I completely forgot that I gave you a flare. Last mm -hmm. time. Oh, not that, not that I know, not that my character knows this. No, but, if he, no. but if he was to contact his allies, how long would that decrease the time? Uh, by quite a decent chunk. Also, you then get a full-on convoy. Well, that is up to his choice, obviously. I mean, this is a large part of the war, technically. This general, is very, like, this is general. very important. Yeah. Yeah. An important piece on the uh, chessboard here. Removing it will deal a heavy blow. In that case, then, if if you are going to do that, I will collect my arrows and I will ride ahead of you guys to go and inform the Empress and get everything sorted. Fair enough. <laughs> How many more minutes do you have on that nullification zone, Bill? Uh, it was 11 originally, so... Okay, now that would be gone 11 now. minus 11. Yeah, yeah. that would be gone now. I'm riding with the... So it doesn't matter anyway. Okay, so you're riding with the pillar. So you're riding yes. with... Okay, I want to point out uh, that in that case, everyone else has to basically guard... The unconscious. Wait, can't you contact them from here? Yes, probably. Then why are you getting on the horse? Because I thought we were all moving. Again, so just as a reminder, no one can really <laughs> easily carry her and keep her nullified. The only person my my I, my idea, I guess I should say. As I ride off ahead, while well, you use your ability to contact your allies, and then with you and your escort, essentially bring her back. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that uh, I don't suppose both of you could be on the horse, and I could phase swim alongside you. We both just hold on. To I, will, I, will I, I will. I will outpace. I will. I will outpace you at the speed. Yeah, mm. that horse is powerful. I However, you if, you, if you would like to send someone with me to go and speak to the Empress, I'm fine. However, I recommend Cloak is the only person who does not come, simply because they are the most important yeah. key to making sure she can't break out. Yeah. So, I guess, Cloak, if you'd like to send someone to speak to the Empress with me, you are more than welcome to. I think the only person who would make sense at this point would be Dias, because he's the only other person yeah. who was in the meeting. Yeah. Go, yeah. go, yeah. Dias. Go, 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 gadget, oh, Dias. Go, Dias. Go, Dias, go, Dias. Dias reluctantly go. comes uh, comes along with you on onto the back of your horse so that you can, uh, you know, ride off and sort that out. Uh, Cloak, do you try? I yee har away. <laughs> uh, Cloak, do, you, do what? Are you, what are you trying to do during this time? Because, uh, you know, what, what exactly is going on? Uh, I guess. I'm just trying to keep them nullified. Okay. And waiting. Are you just holding the, uh... on to them, sort of thing? Yeah, pretty Fair much. Uh, during this time, um, 
you guys sort of like sit down and try and take a rest. I want to point out that like um, uh, Fletcher, you still have the bandage over your eye. Um, it's no longer hurting. Um, Rakia, you're now sort of like doting on him. I, I'm assuming. Yeah, definitely. My, okay. my little soldier boy has been has been injured. <laughs> I'm marching on. It wasn't that bad. You lost an eye. <laughs> You lost an arm. Yeah, but it got it. Well, you make a you can make a good point, but still, you lost an eye. <laughs> it was in combat, <sighs> one for one. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it, give you a little dabby dab, little dabby dab, and the, get the blood off your face at least. For goodness me. <laughs> have to get you a prosthetic eye or something. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> you then just hear... Uh, you then just hear, Perhaps I can arrange that. <laughs> As I then just see, in just standing sort of not too close, like about like five metres away uh, from... Uh, Rose and Cloak just sort of looking over at the two you see the guy that you saw in your strange pre-death vision Fletcher oh it's you stranger the one who uh, helped me out it's good to see you again yes yes it is isn't it so Here's the thing. Prosthetics aren't exactly in my forte, but I might have something that could be just... Yeah. Do just the job. <laughs> I mean, you did me such a service, how can I say no? The only issue is, is that that's going to come to an extra cost, I'm afraid. After all, I'm giving you something for free, and I can't exactly give too much away, can I? <laughs> uh, it is only just an eye. I think I'll stick with the original deal. Fair enough. But speaking but of But thank which, you again. I'm actually not here about your eye, nor am I here about your deal with me. I'm actually here for her. Uh-oh. Uh Rose? The Demon General owes me something of great value. And sadly, they were not able to collect. So I've come for my original price bargain. Hmm. Uh... Go ahead, Tete. Yeah, I don't like the looks of this. Uh... Could you collect the debt after we've put, taken her to prison and uh, interrogated her? You can do whatever you like with her. You want to know exactly what from her that you need to interrogate her for? Uh, well, yeah, just, well, you know, it's uh, kind of secrety stuff. There's nothing that you don't know about her that I already don't. Hmm. Well... We should be taking her away anyway, so we've got that business to settle. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Uh, sir, respectfully, uh, with this, t you know, we found her first, and when we're done with her, you can have her. I don't think that really works for me. You see, here's the thing. I already made a deal with her. Ten years ago, I said that I'd save her life from a certain situation. In repayment, she would give me something of hers in return. Ten years I gave her. Ten years. And at no point did she ever get as low as she did back then. During that time, she became a demon general of the sea. Under Yol Kyger, the strongest creature on the planet. But sadly, that didn't really do her much. 
And you know why it didn't do much to Hora? Because she thought that after everything that I wouldn't come collecting. Ten years later, here I am. Well, that does seem like a bit of a sticky wicket, but uh, again, you know, she's kind of important to our plans you know, to save all of the land of the sunken moon. So oh, could please. it maybe just... You keep... don't need her for the land of the sunken moon. You just want her for power, for knowledge. There's something that you don't understand about her and I can give you that information. All I need is her. As a matter of fact, in good token of gesture, I'll tell you anything that you need to know and I'll be on my way with her. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not so sure about, about this... Uh, I need. We need to like talk to Cloak first for before we do any transactions. <laughs> of course. After all, Talos, or should I say, never mind. Either way, the Shungi member of the interesting powers. I actually have a bone to pick with you, but I'll get to that later. If you give me the girl, I'll give you any of the information that the Empress wants on her. Pro bono. You don't need to ask for anything else. And hell, I'll even throw in that I won't take upon my original deal with Fletcher. What? So, you know, I just... This is a team decision. Pretty... I was kind of dying back there and I made a deal with him. Fletcher! Oh, trust me, he I'm needed sorry. that. If he didn't, he was going to die. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, but I mean, uh, I, I, he seems like a really sketchy guy. N no offence. I would take some offence to that if it weren't for the factor of my job description. I, I, I really just wanted to see you one more time, boss. Oh. So, oh. here's how this is going to go. We're going to do the swappy swap. You get info, I get her. It's all good. Savvy? Sure. Mm. I mean, it ultimately ends up that uh, we get what we need and he gets what we, his, he needs. And you don't have to worry about win -win. me. It's ultimately a win-win. Exactly. See, this is why I knew that I could do a deal with you. Because you were definitely the man for the job. I have a bad feeling about this. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, who would have an ordinary feeling about someone coming to you in the middle of nowhere, appearing after a nullification field has suddenly been dissipated at two and o'clock in the morning? In all honesty, if you actually felt normal about this, that would actually probably make you a lot scarier than I am. <laughs> Well, you know, just looking to Cloak is just that... Well, I, I don't really care much for her. She was pretty horrible, but... You know... Uh, uh, we can get all the information we can out of her. That's, That's the idea. For. Fine, what do you well, need to know about her? Ask away, please. Any questions? I, I promise like you. Any one. questions? Okay. Go on, Fletcher. <laughs> is there any way to reverse the poison she has done over here? Technically, there is. Although, trust me when I say it, you wouldn't like to know the answer as to how it's done. Considering that the only other way, other than releasing her, is finding someone of the same caliber. And trust me when I say this, there's only other one other person that I've actually known about that does have that. And that particular individual would like me to keep my client confidentiality under wraps. Fair enough. Anyone else got questions? Why does she need this artifact? Oh, that's the... simple, really. Uh, she was supposed to get it for me as a repayment of her tenure debt. Oh. Ah. That's why she was so desperate. 
Trust me, she absolutely was. I gave it to her as an objective possibility. Sadly, she couldn't make good on the deal, and therefore that means that she is now forfeit. Does that mean you're going to kill her? My darling, no. No. I don't kill. I take back what is owed to me. That sounds more sinister somehow. <laughs> Call it whatever you like, to be honest. It doesn't really matter too much to you. You're not the ones who are in my debt. What information mm. does she know about uh, your Kliger? <laughs> what information doesn't she know about him? To be honest, the only thing that she doesn't understand is why exactly he hates this place so much. That's something that she can never figure out. But the other things that she knows is how much he loves his booze, drinking, and fighting. It's why he uh, beat the crap out of that anarche git. Oh, yeah. He loves fighting. I Classic Anamon child beliefs. They think they can rule the universe just because that they can hop from one to another. <laughs> However, yeah, he wasn't too bad. half bad. Although he is currently stuck in a prison of Yolkaiga's own making. He's got spirit, I'll give him that. See, what was the... the uh, uh, Abel, what was the other things that we needed from her? <laughs> I can't the remember. other things. Any yeah. other information that you want to ask him? Uh, Eraser, you're being really quiet over there. You got anything to say? I only wish for interrogation about the only pirate. What more do you need to know? Oh. I mean, seriously. Oh. Location Where of the other generals? <laughs> Damn it, boss, you took it from me. That all you Sorry. <laughs> well, one of them is currently circling the island known as Yoten Jail Island. And the other one, well, that little bastard is actually right on his way here. After all, Yol Kaiga has in fact seen a few things, but not quite as many as what you've been up to. You see, as soon as they found out that she was in a bit of trouble, they started mobilising. Temura, the tyrant of demon, is on his way right here. And he's on his way with an entire army of the poor bastard souls who are going to come here looking for trouble. They'll probably join and up with the rest I of... I suppose we'll have to prepare an ambush for the fellas. I might even be able to tell you what beach they're on for a little bit more extra. What kind of extra? Well, first of all, I need to guarantee that I'm going to get my client back. Second, I'm going to have to have a complete guarantee that you are going to help me with something in the future. Hmm, what does that entail? Let's just say it's uh, of no concern until it comes up. Okay, I don't like that. Hmm. I don't like that at all, so no, no dice. For Fair me. Enough. Second, of course, I'm going to have to get one last guarantee, which is that I'm not going to be seeing anyone shirking out on my deal with Fletcher. See, you know, just, you know, Raki is clutching Fletcher a little bit tighter, just like. <laughs> Don't worry. The only issue that you're actually going to have to worry about is if he dies before he can repay me. But we'll pay you how? What did you agree we're to? Up for any deal that allows us to defeat those parts right the back of our land. I like you, I can actually do business with. But I'm afraid, physiology of the nullifier, there's not really much I can really get from you. However, I might be able to give you something if you could perhaps give me something in return. You're not going to ask us to go up with the sword again, the, the same as Rose was trying to do. <laughs> no. To be honest, the sword is of no real concern to me. 
That was yesterday's price. Today's price is a little different. The key to Anamon is not of all that much in contrast or concern, but I do need something from you. I've seen some of your battles, your friends, and they found and fought someone. A certain copier. Do you know where he is now? Or at least, what was his name? The only uh, copier I can remember was the one back in the tournament. And yeah, that... uh, he was absolutely squashed by the behemoth champion. Oh no. Literally into dust. I don't mean him. I mean the uh, the lad who helped you fight off against the uh, terrible people of the entertainment industries in the district of the uh, lovely lavishing boat you were in for three to four oh, days. Oh! The family Fletcher's guy! Blood Look, Fletcher's, Fletcher's <laughs> blood runs cold. Tell me the name of him, and that will be my deal absolutely and positively done. Well, other than the fact that I'll also be needing Rose, of course. Well, I can't remember who he is, so... <laughs> Fletcher can't remember Niam, so I'm going to have to roll history. History. And that is a flat d20. That is a five. You cannot remember. You know, actually, uh, I'm gonna try. I mean, this is a horrible thing because I don't really, I don't really want to. I don't really want to, but this is for the battle, though. Um, I'm gonna go with. Te I'm gonna go with. All right, ten. Here we go. Okay, You're... I know. I know him. Yeah, D his name was Dave. I was going to say Frank. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like... Mm -hmm. I just like, you know... You can see it on like... On, on Rakia's face, you know, like she... You know, she's not hiding it very well. She knows... She knows who he's talking about, but doesn't really want to say it. <laughs> if your tongue but... is held, that's fine. The only thing that I'll be taking then is Rose. That will mean that I can't really give you any more information on exactly where they'll be. And of course, Fletcher's debt is still needing to be repaid. Okay, I'm going to have to like... I'm going to have to do... Uh, this for Fletcher though! Is this a willpower check? I feel like it is, yeah, because yep. it's like, it's Not my... Willpower. it's my. It's my boy. It's it's my boy Fletcher. Can, can, uh... Straight straight willpower. No. no. Dave, his name is Dave. There we go. Was that so hard? Dave, that was it. I thought. Why did I was thinking Frank? I don't so, even know a Frank. First of all, may I please recover Rose? Unless if you have any more questions. Why was she called Rose? God-given name, I'm afraid. Or should I say, parent-given name. Although half the time with powers like these, is there really any much difference? Just curiosity. Is it true that this, you know, this poison's going to consume the whole island? Not if I have anything to say about it, love. I've got a question or two to ask to the right people that might be able to get all this... Lovely lot sorted. It's not in my best interest that these people die off. I have many questions for them, and a few of them owe me a few too many favours. It's yeah. not going to happen with Rose incapacitated anyone. Look, trust me when I say the guy I know, they are, without a doubt, one of the best in the business. You want poison cleared up, you come to the right place. Rose or no Rose, I'll get it done. But, I might be able to get her to do it. But I think you and I would both feel better if we knew that she was away from this place. And in good hands. Don't you think? Yeah. She can't hurt anyone else. 
destroy any more villages. So, Mr. Shungi, are you now going to give me over the girl? Ah, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. He then removes the right hand, snaps his fingers, and two uh, little symbols written on uh, his thumb and his middle finger glow as a portal opens up. Toss her in there, will you? Yeah, I guess I'll uh, throw her in there. Portal then closes up. <laughs> Thanks. And, yeah, I should probably give you your information, eh? After all, you did me a solid. Now it's time for me to repay one of my favours. So here it is. The beach that we'll be going off and where he will be getting is a docking island. Well, a docking platform. Not too far from, I'd say, Nosras. You know the place, don't you? As he asks Cloak. Which, by the way, you definitely do, since you're a native here. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. It's about, mm, give or take, maybe 50 kilometers south of the actual capital. So, of course, you'll be having to go for a decent journey. But it will take him about a day or so before he even gets there. So, do what you will. I know that you're flying platform with your weird girl who seems to like a bit of the old influence and seems to be able to work pretty much wonders. So you should get there in less than a few hours. Hmm. Plenty of time to set up. Second, if you see Cleef off, don't bloody kill him, will you? I still need him alive for something. Uh... If you want, we will probably run into him again. Do you want us to leave him a message? <laughs> no. Nah. He'll know exactly when I come for him and what I do when I ask him. Him and his master ain't much to bat an eyelid at. But even I'm not stupid enough to make a trail between me and him. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, one more thing. You've done us such a great service, and we don't even know your name. <laughs> What's a name? After all, you are a nomad. You have no history, no people, no even family. The girl next to you has a name spoken in one language and understood in only another. Yet she doesn't even know her own parentage or history. And finally... A man who cloaks himself up in a mask and claims his name to be a villain and has the last name of an entire clan. Who am I to judge? But at the same time, you've got to see my predicament. If I give you my name, you've got more than one advantage over me. Because I barely even know what exactly it is that ties you all together other than just a few points on a magic tattoo. That's a fair point. <laughs> you take it easy then. Yeah. However, I should at least give you this as a kind gesture. If you don't want to die, Fletcher, best thing that you need to do is stay away from the damn champions. Half of them have abilities that will completely fry you. Oh, right. I should probably let you know. I checked in on the old Crawford girl. <laughs> he creates an yeah. incredibly creepy smile. Good news then. She's doing well. Her and her siblings are living in Irish City and trying to get on with their lives. Not a warrior, oh. but now a builder. Also... <laughs> That bloody mercenary has already been taken care of. As per a certain subject of mine, I found out a few things about him that didn't exactly cross too many things on my list. So I ticked him off it myself. I knew I liked you. 
Nah. I should probably warn you. Temura is probably one of the coldest bastards in all of the demon generals. He'll even give you a run for your money, Nullifier. Just be on your best behaviour. You don't want to wind up dead, especially not to any of his cronies. But even more so, the old Kyger's got a mean swing. I heard that he took the head off of an entire elephant bull in just less than a flick. Eh, he'll get what he's... He's got coming to him shortly. True. Although, don't forget, if you beat him, you get his whole entire bounty as well as any points that he may have earned during the tournament. Which basically means that you got about, what, 15 million on him? He then raises a, uh, he then raises from his pocket something as it looks like some kind of like small stick. He places it into his lips and he then snaps his fingers as it then ignites. He then begins smoking. <sighs> See you later. Unless you've got any more questions. Very well then. Goodbye. Take care. I'll see you very soon, hopefully. Especially you, Fletcher. Five years. Make them count. As he then just vanishes <laughs> off into like ripples of light as they dissipate. Ah, uh, poor guy. I, I'm I don't very... think so. I'm very tired right now. I'm gonna take it. Just before you do so, as you're sort of like dozing off, you suddenly feel like this insanely searing pain in your hand. <laughs> like as in, it wakes you up from any fatigue that you currently have, as it actually makes you want to scream out in pain. Uh, roll me a willpower. You're ah. able to you're able to keep it under wraps, and if you don't want to make anyone else aware, you now have enough will to actually make that so. However, when you do actually end up looking down at it, you notice something is different with the symbol in your palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. It reads in Baton Fergus. Interesting. Fletcher put his hand away in his pocket. Fair enough. So, guys, where to next? <laughs> shall we end it on that bombshell? Yeah, where we shall end our session. What the hell is going on? <laughs> what was that? Why did why did why did Satan appear? So I just wanna I just wanna I, I just wanna say something now. real quick before we do actually come off. Uh Rakia, you said that you wanted to do the nerve pinch thing to knock out uh thingy. Because she's a boss, yeah. that wouldn't have actually worked on her until uh until after, weirdly enough. After half health. Right? Yes. Yeah, so she eventually got down uh... to half health. Because uh, she had uh, six hundred and fifty at the time that you tried it, she only she took well, uh, she took two hundred and twenty damage. So it's like even if you had succeeded, it wouldn't have knocked her out. Um, ah, nuts! Because <laughs> I was like, hoping we did more. Yeah, bosses aren't. <laughs> well, no, no, no. You did eventually do do so by then, nearly four hundred yeah. total, and that's why you're able to knock her out uh, at the end point. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was all fine. That was all good. Um, and yeah, so. Uh, basically, just to just to cap this whole thing off, uh, the idea is that you guys are going to have the possibility of we're going to be skipping some time. The time that we'll be skipping is you guys will be eventually going back, uh, having to explain some things, 
some awkward conversations. But for the time, the Shungi members are actually going to um, take you back to the capital, get you some rest. So you'll actually act you'll actually be able to have a uh, an eight hour rest um, properly, and then you'll also get um, you know you know you'll basically wake up in the next morning in the place. Uh, it will be around about 8 or 10 a.m. in the morning for you guys uh, at the, you know, on the next session, and that is where we will take a, a take our, you know, take our connection. As hopefully that will be when Anarche joins with you guys. Yay! Yeah, you know, and we, we can finally thought... eat. <laughs> finally, priorities. I could I, still I... appear on a horse. You don't know. Yeah, that. I was. I honestly oh. thought that's what was happening. I thought that somehow Anarche had got a horse and just to be extra was riding in on a horse. <laughs> Where did he get a horse? <laughs> you, know, you know what would have been the funniest part about that is, is that it's like we find out that Anarche has then also travelled backwards in time to fight you to f help fight Rose and then basically disappear off into the distance. Well, that wouldn't be the first time he's fucked with time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but yes, that is the end of the session. Thank you very much for everyone for listening, and as always, have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. <gasps>